Yeah. All right, so we uh, we are starting we are starting Red Badge of Courage. Your turn. Um, the introduction is what I gave you on Friday, so you have the introduction to it. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna start reading uh, the first the entire first page is very revealing. It's not that long a book, so everything in it is important. So I'm gonna ask, yeah. Yeah, can you wait for him to get back? Uh, we're, we're not. We're gonna do, we're gonna do page three. The first page of the book. We're not reading the introduction. All right. So, uh, Tucker, would you start for us? Um, I mean, you can probably read a page, that, and we'll we'll shift that. Read for about thirty-five minutes. No, page three, the first chapter. There's a lot there if we were going to analyze it completely, we might get into, but let's just suffice it to say that there are two armies on different sides of a river, and that's one of the things that makes makes us believe that this is the Battle of Chancellorsville, because Fredericksburg is where the army was at this time, 1863. Uh, this is May of 1863, so it's springtime, but the two armies were across the river. Um, there are a lot of neat things there. If you look at it, he's personifying the armies. They have red eyes. Um, notice the colors. I talked about Impressionism the other day. And notice the colors. Uh, and it talks about the army kind of waking up and trembling and you know, almost like it's a thing, a living thing. All right, so uh, Alistair, would you read a couple more? All right, well, before we go on, um, notice that they're inactive. The Army is, you know, they, they're getting rumors that they're going to be moving. That's because it's clear that they haven't been anywhere in a while. They've been sitting still. And so uh, one of the soldiers, notice he's called the tall soldier. All of this, not in your questions yet, but um, this is uh, the way you get to know all the characters, not by their names, but by their size and other things. Some characteristics. So we'll go to Jackson. Um, it's a lie, but that, that's all there is. Uh, I thought you had a lie, so I don't know that it's private violence. He smoothed Basil's wash from his hands with dust, sulkily into his trousers pockets. He took the matter as a front end. I don't believe the damned old army is ever going to move or set. I've got, I've got ready to move. Soldiers that felt called upon to defend the truth of the Lord, he himself came to this. He and the wild ones came there to fight in the 
Uh, you, you got a pencil and you can use it for this book. Uh, Circle the Tall Soldier, that's one of the important characters in the book. The Loud Soldier is also another important character. Neither one of them is the main character, but they are important. What, do you, what can you, what, how, what can you conclude from the way these soldiers talk? They're not what? That's a fair, fair assessment of them. And most soldiers, well, first of all, they're young. And, and most soldiers today would be very well educated. At least high school, you have to be to, grad, to get in the Army. But uh, that wasn't the case in the Civil War. And, and all, all wars are fought by teenagers, you know, early 20s. I mean, the, the, the commanding generals and officers are, are older than that. But the actual combat fighting on the ground, not only are they led by older officers, but most of them are young. So um, we, don't, we don't yet know the war. We know, we know that it's a civil war, but he never mentions it. And so these two were fighting over, are they going to move or not? So uh, Ben, start reading. Where are we at? Where are we at? Page four. Yeah, page four. A corporal began to swear before the assemblage. He had just put a costly board floor in his house, he said. During the early spring, he had refrained from adding extensively to the comfort of his environment because he had felt that the army might start on the march at any moment. Of late, however, he had been impressed that they were in a sort of an eternal camp. One more. Many of the men engaged in a spirited debate. On one outlined in a, in a peculiarly lucid manner all the plans of the commanding general. He was opposed by men who advocated that there were other plans of the campaign. Of campaign. They clamored at each other, members making futile bids for the popular attention. Meanwhile, the soldier who had fetched the rumor bustled about the much important. He was continually, continually assailed by questions. And one thing we What's can that? relate to, uh, we've never, none of us have been in an uh, army, but uh, like all large organizations, including school, we don't know what's going on a lot of the time. You know, you hear rumors, what's going on? Are we going to be out Saturday or Friday? Are we, is anybody, you know, what's, what's going on? We, we, when a lot of rumors start. So that's one thing you notice that these privates and corporals, the, you know, the lowest part of the, the army, um, they don't know what's going on. Uh, and they're not going to be told until, they're not going to be told, well, we're going to give you an announcement this afternoon. No, they're just going to make the announcement. They're, they're, they'll just move when they're told to. Um, and we can go to um, Emma. What's up, Sam? The army going to move. Army Now, Jim is the tall soldier, and he is an important character here. Um, and you can keep reading. There was much food for thought and manner in which he replied. He came near to convincing them by disdaining to produce fruit. They grew much, of, much excited over it. There was a youthful pride that he listened with eager ears to the words of the tall soldier and to the hairy comments of his comrades. After receiving a fill of discussions concerning marches and paths, Um, this is the main character of the story. And I want you to write his name in the margin so you won't be confused ever. His name is Henry, H-E-N-R-Y Fleming, F-L-E-M-I-N-G. Right here he's called the youthful private. And you notice when he hears this, this, these rumors about they're moving out, they're moving up tomorrow, um, it says he went to his hut, he leaves, he leaves and he, he wants to be alone with his thoughts. It says so. He wished to be alone with his thoughts. And so we're going to be answering this first question here. Um, let's, let's read before we, we read it. But he is the, the focus of the entire book. So we'll go to Sal. So. He lay down on the light bulb, stretched across the end of the room. On the other end, tobacco boxes were made to serve as furniture. They were grouped about the fireplace. A picture from an illustrated week was on the log wall. Rifles with parallel bone pegs. Equipments hung on hanging projections, and some tin dishes lay upon a small pile of firewood. A folded 
content was serving as a roof. The sunlight, without beating upon it, made it glow a light yellow shade. A small window shot an oblique square of whiter light upon the cluttered floor. The smoke from the fire at times neglected the clay chimney and wreathed into the room, and its flimsy chimney of clay and sticks made endless threats to set ablaze the whole establishment. Yeah, he's normal. The youth was in a little trance of astonishment, so they were at last going to fight. On the morrow, perhaps, there would be a battle, and he would be in it. For a time, he was obliged to labor, to make himself believe. He could not accept with assurance and omen that he was about to mingle in one of those great affairs of the earth. What do you think Henry Fleming, the youth, what do you think his uh, thoughts are about? It said he left when he heard about them going into battle, and he, he has to go and think about that. And now he's alone, and he's astonished. Uh, what do you think he's astonished about? What do you think his concerns are? Well, I think I told you these, this unit is absolutely brand new. There are no veterans in it. Now, the, the officers are probably veterans, but not the soldiers themselves. Uh, my guess is, like you would be, I mean, it's one thing to have a test next year. I used to get really nervous before games, particularly I can remember the first game of a season uh, it was like, man, I just can't believe we're finally here. I've been practicing for a month. And, uh, you know, I had all these thoughts. First time I ever played a high school football game. I had no idea what it was like. I was really disappointed, too, because I just remember how fast it was. Like we, I just felt like I was running around the field. Like, I just, I didn't, I, I thought I knew my job, but it was just not at all like I expected. He doesn't know how he's going to respond. And, now, his is life and death. Ours is not. But I think we can relate to doing something for the first time and wondering, how am I going to perform? Um, let's see, Walker, what did he said? He had, of course. I, don't know if I, I can't speak for you guys. I suspect, at least I knew guys my age when I was a kid, that's one thing we thought a lot about. We thought a lot about war and what, what would I ever fight in a war? And I love stories about war, movies about war. I don't know if that, I mean, if, if you're in the video game, most of them are violent, you know, they involve some sort of warfare. So I guess that would answer my question. But um, he's never been in war, but he's thought about it all of his life. So that's a part of this. What's he going to do? It's not just is he going to live or die. It's like, how am I going to perform? Um, he's concerned about that. And uh, why don't we go to Julia?
had made a sign rebellion against the against the yellow light from on the far right of the The newspapers the gossip of the village, his own victory, had aroused him to an uncheckable, uncheckable degree. They were intrigued by the finely bound earth. Almost every day the newspapers had an announcement by the type of victory. I wonder we pause just a minute and look at the questions and just get caught up. The first one, um, I'll read it. As soon as we meet the youth, Henry Fleming, we see that he lives in two separate and conflicting worlds. I don't know if you see that, but it is true. I think that's probably jumping the gun. I don't know how that we did see that yet. A world of fantasy and a world of reality. After the youth hears about the possibility of imminent battle, he wished to be alone with some new thoughts, and he is in a little trance of astonishment. What is the cause of the new thoughts and the astonishment? So what, what is it that Cause this wave of thinking and contemplating. Yes. Like new war being um, kick started in Tim Warren to take part in it. Right. So they're going to move out. It's it's finally here. It, it's they've been training for months, and now it looks like the real they're at the real deal. Uh, number two, specifically, how did the war play a role in the youth's fantasy life? I've mentioned that in my own. It says he dreamed of battles all his life, and he imagined people secure in the shadow of eagle-eyed prowess. Uh, he'd seen himself as a hero. He had always imagined in war. And frankly, is there anything ever equal to it? If you want to be tested, if you want to be a hero, there's really, even today, although there are a lot of ways people are heroes. You know, we have athletes, we have uh, musicians and so forth, even politicians, but military's always been a way to become a hero. I mean, we associate heroism with military. They're almost like synonymous. He had always seen himself as a hero. So I'm going to pick, pick it up there um, at the bottom. He wanted to enlist, but his mother wouldn't let him. That's sort of where we were. His mother had discouraged him, so we're at last at the bottom. Um, at last, however, he made his plea for rebellion against this yellow light thrown in from the color of his ambitions. The newspaper, the gossip of the village, his own picturings had aroused him to an uncheckable degree. They were in truth fighting finally down the earth. Almost every day, the newspaper printed accounts of a decisive victory. I know you just read that, um, Julia, but we can. Uh, Notice who's fueling 